do something that will turn around your situation. You know, in this world, there are 7.3 billion people, but each one has got dif a dif different fingerprints. Unique. 7.3 billion people, which means 7.3 billion people, each one has a unique gift. That if each one use their gifts and produce something, the world will be a garden of blessings. We will be, it will be heaven on earth. There will be no frustration because the culture of heaven will demonstrate itself and show manifest in the world. When we walk, we will walk in the valley of beauty in this world. Be fruitful. God said. Now the next command is multiply. So the product that you have produced, it should not just end at production. You should reproduce. Produce, then reproduce, and produce many. And they should be of the same kind everywhere. In 1892, a man called Esa Griggs Kendler came up with a product, the Coca-Cola product. Today, when I go to every part of the world, it is the same Coca-Cola product when I test it. In my native country, Zambia, in one of the villages, uh, I buy a Coca-Cola, it tastes the same. I go to Canada, it tastes the same. I go to Europe, it tastes the same. Everywhere I go to India, it tastes the same. The same product doesn't change at all. So the product that you produce, a unique product, should not just end at production. It should graduate to reproduction into things of the same kind. Where would our world be today if all of us took up a challenge? In one of the, the countries when I was preaching and people wanted to they, they, they were complaining that government was not giving them inputs, fertilizer inputs to grow maize or any other thing. Then I said, is, uh, is corn the only thing that you can produce? I, I challenged them. I said, there are regume plants such as, such as beans. If you plant beans, it doesn't actually need fertilizer. All you need is to do crop rotation every year, produce something. They said, oh, man. We don't know what we can do. It's the government policy and the like. So, multiplication of the produce that we have is dependent on our eagerness and also developing visions that go beyond our own time. You see, if this man, Kendra, decided not to reproduce, not to multiply his product, Coca-Cola would not be anywhere at all. It's everywhere in the world because he is always multiplying the product. Then God said, replenish. Now, the word replenish simply means to reproduce. I once worked in, in a store, and I was given a specific role to replenish the shelves at night when people came and bought all the stuff during the day, then in the evening. At night, we had to replenish the stores to get ready for the morning stock. So what that actually means is that after you have produced something, you have multiplied something, 
you should be able to distribute to all the different parts. The different parts of your village, the different parts of your city, the different parts of the entire world. The law of distribution entails that more has to be reproduced each and every time. Now you are there. You are always mourning about your situation. Everything works according to laws. Every key to success has to work within the framework of a particular law. And these I'm trying to bring out today, they are the laws that we are given for success to Adam and Eve. Produce, reproduce, distribute. Then he says, if you can only follow these three steps, the next step, which is subdue the earth, will come in its full swing. Now, to subdue is to, go to, to govern. To subdue is, to, is, to, is to, to, to manage or to rule. You have to manage that which you have produced. That's why there are copyrights now. I, I will protect what I have produced. This is my brand. Shaping Generations is my brand. And I reproduce it on different television stations. I'll reproduce it in CDs and distribute to people and share my gifts of grace with everyone. Motivate people like you who is watching today because I know my gift, so I had to produce it into something, a brand that can go to the ends of the earth so that someone can be saved by listening to the word of God. And then I reach a point when I said, I need to manage. I need to manage shaping generations. I need to put all the things in place. I need to make sure that there is stuff. I need to make sure that we have cameras. I need to make sure that we can extend to the ends of the earth. We have to manage, replenish, and put things in perspective. At the end of the day, I will dominate within my space. To dominate lies at the climax of everything that we do, which starts with production, multiplication, distribution, subduing, and then dominating. At the point of dominating, we are not competing with anybody. There should never be any competition in this world. Do you know the reason? The reason why there shouldn't be competition is because each one is unique. When you produce a unique brand, you cannot compete with anybody. You will always walk with your head high because nobody will have a brand. For example, the way I mentioned earlier in the sermon about the fingerprints, which are a brand as well. So when, when, when the policeman is reading my, my, my fingerprints, he knows that they are all different from anybody, including from my own children. My children, my four kids, they have different fingerprints. Though they are related to me, they are so unique. I was talking to one of my sons, and we were just talking, Wanji, we were just talking about things relating to life. So I was telling him the story of my life. And I told him, you know, my son, I am successful in everything I do because I discovered my purpose. And I've been working towards it for you. My son is only 10 years. He looked at me. He says, Daddy, I already have my own plan of success. I was tied to the heart. And then he told me, Daddy, I'm sure you don't know that I'm even learning how to code on the computer. You haven't been to any school. He says, no, I don't need to go to school because everything is on the internet. So I'm learning through YouTube how to code. 
So at 10 years old, he is able to code. He probably doesn't even need a degree because he can always do things. So most of the stuff on my YouTube, most of the stuff that I upload to the internet, he is the one that does them. And there are things that I hardly know or understand. And he is developing that into the future. Now, this is how the law works in the church. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, that even in the ministry and the government of the church and every institution, people have different roles to play. The Bible says it's he that gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some teachers and pastors, so that together we can build the body of Christ. So you can have an office space, you can have a big company, but each one of the individuals that work in a company comes with unique gifts and dispositions. No one is above the other because every part, every component is actually the same and works for the good of everyone else. I used to ride a motorbike when I just started ministry about 18 years ago. So, <laughs> sometimes I used to have problems with that motorbike because maybe the spark plug was not working. And if it's not working, then the entire motorbike is not going to move. Sometimes the brakes would not work. If the brakes were not working, I can't go on the road. And then I ask myself, which one of the parts of this motorbike is more important than the other? None. Why? Because each one was important in its own unique way. Each of the parts has its function. If it's not there, then it can't function. Even a sweeper in a company, a janitor in an organization is just as important as the managing director. Each one has got that part that comes, and as long as they can improve their own areas of specialization, everyone should be able to rise. In God's beautiful garden, there is no one above and there is no one low. We are all one, with different gifts and different dispositions. That's why <laughs> Jesus Christ, using the law of production, <laughs> 